you've never seen a mega mover like this. A ship so huge, it can carry nearly a thousand people, tons of cargo, and hundreds of vehicles. So sturdy and fast, it cuts through giant six foot swells at a blazing 40 knots. This is a super ferry, and construction is on to build one of the toughest yet. Ready to brave the mighty Pacific. Come on board the Hawaii Super Ferry. Hawaii, an island paradise known for surf, sand, and seclusion. But for the million people who live here, the isolation comes at a price. 2,500 miles from any mainland, the state is scattered over 300 miles of open ocean. It's 120 miles from Oahu to Kauai. 160 miles from Honolulu to Kahului, across seas that can be notoriously rough. The only way for people to get from one island to the other now is by air. A ferry service could cut the cost of travel while carrying passengers and their cars. But to compete with planes, the ferries would have to be super fast and super stable. That's never been possible until now. Here in Mobile, Alabama, a team of 400 workers is attempting to build that dream. To conquer Hawaii's legendary surf, they've chosen a design synonymous with stability, a catamaran. Most ships have one hull, but a catamaran has two. Two legs mean better balance atop rolling waves. Most catamarans are small, but to keep ferry ticket prices low, this ship's got to carry close to a thousand passengers and their vehicles. And that means building mega-sized, longer than a football field, and almost as wide. When finished, the ferry will fill this 300-foot-long warehouse making it one of the largest catamarans in the world. And to keep this mega ship from guzzling gas, they're building with aluminum instead of steel. It weighs almost half as much, so the ferry will be more fuel efficient. But in order to succeed in Hawaii, the super ferry will also have to be fast. So in addition to the catamaran hull, the design calls for supercharged engines and high-tech jets to rocket it through the water at 40 knots. That's 46 miles per hour. That should make this 1,400-ton ferry four times as fast as cargo ships and provide a viable alternative to air travel between the islands. There are concerns about the ferry's impact. Critics worry the ship will carry unintended stowaways, predatory microorganisms that can stick to dirty tires and the ship's exterior. So cars will be inspected before boarding, and the hull will be coated with a special silicone paint to repel pests. And to prevent possible collision with migrating whales, the ship will have fast-turning capabilities and will post lookouts. But whether the stadium-sized catamaran will go as fast as a speeding car is anyone's guess. Leading the operation, project manager Dave Groudon. We've been developing it for a lot of years, in, uh, right down to the nuts and bolts and brackets we use for certain flight work as well. He's trying to keep everything as light as possible. A lot of the guys here have never worked on these type of vessels before, and it's new to them. 
We're uh, working our way through it. Dave's worked on ferry construction since he was 16. But this is the first time he's led a project this big. In just a few months, the monster ferry is due to roll out of the shed. They'll have to move the 1,400-ton ship 500 feet to the water. Then, the real test begins. Sea trials. The ferry must prove its speed and stability on the high seas. Pass the test, and it could bring Hawaiians closer together than ever. But if it fails, $200 million will be down the drain. The team has a monumental job and a tight schedule. In just eight weeks, they have to complete a twin hull structure, 300 feet long, and as big as a city block. Workmen have built 40 separate modules and are now piecing them together. The catamaran design will reduce drag through the water. Most boats have one wide hull to stay balanced, but more surface area means greater resistance against the water. A catamaran gets its balance from having two hulls, so each one can be razor fine to slice through the water with ease. Today, the team must install the forward section of the left hull. It's as large as a motor home the biggest catamaran bow they've ever built. They'll need a light touch. Three cranes gently position the bow. Workers line it up, carefully. Any gaps between the bow and the rest of the hull will become catastrophic leaks when the ferry hits water. The first bow goes in. But it will be months until they know if the seal's watertight. Barges take a full day to cross the 160 miles from Maui to Oahu. The super ferry promises to make the same trip in just three hours. There's only one way to get this 1,400-ton vessel going fast enough. Meet the most powerful high-speed diesel engine in the world. This 20-cylinder powerhouse packs more punch than 100 cars. To reach full speed, the Super Ferry will need four of them for a total of 44,000 horsepower. Each one weighs a whopping 50 tons, but that's still five times lighter than a steel ship's engine. If these new engines perform as promised, not only will the super ferry be fast enough to appeal to air travelers, the ferry will be more fuel efficient. Today's a big day for the crew. With sea trials scheduled for just six months away, it's time to slide the engines into their chambers. It's no easy feat. They need to fit like hands into gloves. thing protecting each three million dollar engine now are these pads on the bottom. The crew carefully hoists the engine 15 feet up, parallel to the chamber. Next, they glide the engine onto a set of tracks to guide it perfectly into place. cylinders ready to crank. It's time to bring in the four mighty mega jets designed to propel this ship like a rocket. 
but the team will have to hustle to install them because a major deadline is looming and they can't afford to miss it. For months, the workmen at the Super Ferry Warehouse in Alabama have been building a stadium-sized catamaran to conquer Hawaii's rough seas. They're closing in on D-Day, the day the ferry is scheduled to move out of the shed and into the water. Workers have to finish the ferry in the next few weeks in time for its scheduled launch. Getting the ship to water requires closing off part of Mobile Bay, one of the busiest seaports in the nation. They had to plan the launch date several weeks in advance. And if the ferry's not ready, cargo ships bound for sea won't wait. The ferry will have one shot. The team's already completed the hulls and installed four powerful engines. But several critical parts remain. Four monster jets to get this mega mover moving fast. A shock absorber system to steady passengers atop rocky waves. And a super slick paint job to reduce the boat's drag through the water. When speed is everything, it helps to have jets like these. They take the place of traditional propellers to drive the ship through the water. Think of the difference between a propeller airplane and a jet plane. Except that these jets move water instead of air. They're built to push through 17,000 gallons of water a second. On the open ocean, that should translate to a target speed of 40 knots. Faster than a racing yacht. This will be a tricky install. With no room for cranes inside the warehouse, each six-ton jet will have to be lifted using old-fashioned brawn. Soon we'll be fitting the jet units to the vessel. There's not a lot of room above it or beside it, uh, which all the way through the build has made it difficult for use of overhead cranes. Two units work in tandem to heave the jet into its tight housing. squeezes into the narrow jet shaft to align from within. A little more finessing, and the first bolt locks into place. 30 more to go. No one wants a jet this powerful to break loose. Install looks like a success. With D-Day looming, the team turns to its toughest technical challenge. How to make the ferry ride smooth in the choppiest water. The catamaran design promises stability, but Hawaii's six-foot waves will still cause the ship to rock. To steady the ride, designers have borrowed an idea from the world of aviation. The wing-shaped device is called. Normally, boats rock with every wave. But a T-foil minimizes that effect. When a wave swells under the ferry, a flap folds down, pivoting the boat downward to counteract the wave. The two T-foils may be small, but at high speed, their slightest motion can have a huge effect. They have to position the two-story column with incredible precision. Do it wrong, 
and the rocking gets even worse. And no matter how fast the trip or cheap the ticket, no one is going to pay to get seasick. They hoist the shaft into position. Then there's a problem. The shaft's out of alignment. Finally, the T-foil is in place. With launch now just days away, there's one more mega task remaining painting the entire hall, all 82,000 square feet of it. This is not your average paint job. Workers use a super sleek silicone base to repel harmful microorganisms that could travel from island to island. Anything stuck to the hall from algae to barnacles would also create drag, slowing the ferry down. It takes 12,000 gallons of paint to cover the surface three times. But right now, humidity is puckering the paint, which will lead to peeling later. And once this boat is in the water, no one wants to pull it back out for a new paint job. They'll have to hope the weather changes before it jeopardizes the scheduled launch. The countdown to launch draws near for the Hawaii Super Ferry. If the design works, this football field sized ship will soon race between Hawaii's islands with the speed of a car. It could transform the state's economy. Like the new super ferries in the Canary Islands. Located off the coast of North Africa, these seven islands are scattered across 300 miles of ocean. For years, they've faced Hawaii's same travel challenges. But now, five super ferries connect the islands. The ships make dozens of runs a day, transporting thousands of people to work, patients to doctors, and merchandise to market. Star Super Ferry, the Bentago Express. It's the lifeline between the archipelago's two capital cities, separated by 55 miles of ocean. Residents depend on the Bentago to sail no matter what the weather. So the huge catamaran has to be stable enough to overcome rough seas and storms. And today, a freak windstorm has turned the normally calm waterway into a churning sea. In these gale force winds, just pulling into port is dangerous. There's only a narrow passage between the dock and an arsenal of razor sharp rocks that could rip through the ferry's fragile aluminum skin. Most large vessels couldn't even attempt this. But because the catamaran has jet steering on two hulls, the super ferry can do something traditional ships can't. Turn on a dime. Single hulled boats with one set of jets have to propel forward in order to turn. But the super ferry's separated jets steer from each hull to pivot the boat in place. Watch. The captain considers the wind and currents to calculate the turn. At the touch of a joystick, the captain rotates each jet propelling the vessel into a 90-degree turn.
until the aft end of the vessel faces forward. We are now finalizing the turn. I am now squeezing the stern to fit into dock. The ferry eases safely into dock. To keep on schedule, the crew has only 20 minutes to reload before departure. The super ferry's garage runs the length of the ship. Over a hundred cars and trucks prepare to board from the rear. Few ferries could handle this many vehicles. But this ship's got a secret weapon. A deck that transforms itself to make space. Just like on the Hawaii ferry, the mezzanine decks can raise all the way to the ceiling for a full load of freight vehicles. Or the decks can split to hold a mix of short cars and tall cargo trucks. With the storm picking up, it's going to be a rough ride. But for some people, the ferry's the only way to get to work. We come as a big group. Since we bring large musical instruments, it is much better to come by bus. We bring our instruments on board and it is more comfortable than an airplane. The final passengers make their way on board. And in less than 20 minutes, the super ferry is ready. Now, the real challenge begins. The Bentago Express heads towards sea and the brewing storm. This weather is rare for the Canaries, but Hawaii's no stranger to mean seas. Seeing how the Bentago performs is a great test run for the Hawaii designers. The voyage starts out calmly enough. Passengers settled in for the ride. When I take the ferry, I like to play the temple, read, and talk to my friends, men and women. All's calm on deck. But up in the control room, the captain sees rougher water ahead. Here we are on a Sunday at 12 in the afternoon with a maximum wave height of approximately four and a half meters. The swells are as tall as a one-story house, twice their normal height. Ten miles from land, with 40 more to go, the Bentago meets the storm head on. Waves swell under the hull, rocking the ferry like a cradle, from side to side, and front to back, like a rocking horse. The swells get larger, and the ferry rocks higher. Suddenly, the ship slams straight into a high swell, bow first, shaking the passengers. But thanks to the twin hull design, the ferry never loses its balance. When a wave strikes one of the hulls, the second hull counterbalances the force, keeping the super ferry upright. Spray from a wave engulfs the window of the passenger deck, 30 feet above the waterline. The T-foil fights turbulence under the hull, making the ride smoother. That's good for passengers and their fragile cargo. I transport glass bottle drinks every day. I leave Santa Cruz de Tenerife for Las Palmas in Gran Canary four or five times a week. 
almost every day. For all of us who live on the island, this kind of transportation is necessary. Without this boat, it would be very difficult. After a rocky hour at sea, the mega catamaran has shown it can safely sail through rough water. Hawaii looks forward to the same smooth surface. But the new Hawaii Super Ferry still has to prove its own worth in the water. And right now, it's facing troubles just getting out of the shed. With construction wrapping up, the Hawaii Super Ferry now faces two final milestones. Launching the ship into the water and testing it at sea trials to see if it performs as promised. Though it took a week, the paint has dried just in time for launch. Now the crew faces a huge challenge. How to move a 1,400 ton ship 500 feet from the warehouse to the water. Most big ships are plunged into the water down a ramp. But that could damage the catamaran's featherweight aluminum hull. Instead, it will have to be lowered in flat. Huge freight train trolleys will roll the ferry from the warehouse onto a dry dock that floats on the water, level with the ground. The dry dock will then pull out to deep water and sink to release the ferry. This launch took months to coordinate. And right now, a major obstacle stands in the ship's way, literally. We have to remove the front of the building to get it out. Um, we knew that all the way along. Um, it's just that the, the boat's a bit wider than the doors ever were made. So we're having to, um, a few days before we launch, just remove the front of the building and uh, move it to the side, launch the vessel and then place it back on. The crew has to quickly take apart the front of the warehouse in time for launch. We'll pick up on it from here this time. We're waiting on the swing. Pitch straight up on it. Right now. Brandon Casey has been working since dawn to remove the siding. Ready? Oh, it's going to swing. It's going to swing, yeah. The aluminum sheets swing like sails in the breeze, making them hard to handle. Clearing the way for the super ferry requires equal parts balance and bravery. Up here, one misstep can send men and launch plans crashing to the ground. Brain. Brandon and the crew work through the night to get the job done. Finally, the shed is down. But before the team can move such a huge but delicate vessel, they have to lay the tracks perfectly level. They'll have to reel the ship out of the shed, inch by inch, and there's one hook strong enough for this 300-footer, the 23-ton Mega Winch. This huge pulley weighs as much as 10 SUVs and will have to pull over 60 times that much onto one of the biggest dry docks in North America. It has to be to support a ferry 300 feet long and 30 feet tall. That's as long as a football field and as tall as a three-story house. The dry dock is so huge that the harbor master has to limit other shipping traffic to make room for it. No easy feat. 
This is the channel to the Gulf of Mexico, the one passageway for seagoing cargo ships coming from the Mobile River. Dozens of ships pass through here every week. Each one costs thousands of dollars a day to operate and can carry millions of dollars in urgent cargo. Right now we have at least two ships offshore. I'm aware of the right around 8 o'clock that got delayed berthing. Nobody likes delay in their shipping and getting their cargo moving. So our focus here is to do it safely and do it as, as reasonably quick as we can to minimize the delays on traffic. It's 9 a.m. The team will have 10 hours to roll the ferry onto the dock. The harbor reopens to all traffic at 7 p.m. Workers should have enough time to roll out the ship. But right now, they're still fighting the river's currents to steady the dry dock. They have to anchor each corner of the dock to shore. The head of one of these anchor cables weighs as much as a car and can only be moved with a floating crane. The crew must thread the cumbersome loops through pin bolts on the side of the dock. Finally, success. The dock is anchored just outside the warehouse. Now it's time to lay the 500 feet of trolley rails connecting the warehouse to the dock. The team's estimates were close, but there's still a gap. With the clock ticking, they hustle to custom fit the final piece of track. 30 minutes later, the pathway is complete. At 3 p.m., it's time for rollout. The ferry now has four hours to get on the dock before the harbor reopens. It should only take half that time. For project manager Dave Groudon and the entire construction crew, two years of work finally come down to this moment. It's a sense of accomplishment for the guys in the, in the shop. They can actually see the vessel coming out of the building and. It's the, they're near the end of the line. It's been a very long build for over two years of this build, and uh, they want to see the end of it as well. It's so time to get it out of the building. The winch coils on the dry dock begin to pull taut. And finally, the ferry begins to move. The Hawaii Super Ferry sees daylight for the first time, and rollout appears to be off to a good start. But just as quickly as it began, the action grinds to a halt. 100 feet down the tracks, there's a snag. The giant vessel was built so snugly into the warehouse that scaffolding near the roof threatens to scratch the ship's fragile aluminum frame. With daylight waning, a team rushes in with power tools. By 5 p.m., the beam has been removed. But the team has just two hours left before the harbor reopens to boat traffic. And now, they're working in the dark. Finally, it's safe for the ferry to move forward again. For the team that's worked so long and hard on this project, there's a sense of monumental accomplishment as the catamaran rolls out. But three quarters of the way onto the dock, it stops again. The ferry is so heavy, it's pushing the dock too low in the water. And its track is no longer level with the rails coming out of the warehouse. They'll have to raise the dock a couple of inches. There's only one way to do that. Release thousands of gallons of water weight. It works. The ferry gets the green light. Finally, just before the 7 p.m. deadline, 
it comes to a stop, resting entirely on the dry dock. Launch is half complete. The next step is sinking the dock. In the morning, they'll see how the massive hull floats. The crew clears the dock of anything that might float. Engineers catch a lift onto the ferry to check for leaks. There's only one way aboard, and it's not for the faint of heart. It's go time. The dry dock starts taking on water. Once it reaches the bottom of the hull, the crew will check for leaks. The water rises higher and higher. And engineers head below. Up on deck, Supervisor Dave Groudon waits. Right now I'm checking to see if the is in the leaks in the seams that within the well seams. Make sure we're not taking on any water up in the well seam. For the crew who have spent so many hours building these hulls, being afloat takes some getting used to. I kept on hearing that sloshing, and I was like, what in the world is that? The water hitting the underside of the boat. Finally, Dave gets the word. No leaks in the hull. Go ahead. Yeah, Fred, we're all clear and ready to go when you are. The dry dock is nearly sunk. When the water reaches the 13-foot mark, the ship should have enough buoyancy to float. The water inches higher, and suddenly, the ship pulls loose. Tugboats guided into open water. And the ferry finally floats free. The first milestone, launch, is complete. Now, the ferry's ultimate test lies ahead. Sea trials. To succeed in Hawaii, the ferry needs to be affordable, fast, and comfortable. By transporting over 800 passengers and their vehicles, the ferry will keep ticket prices low. But can it compete with planes to provide a fast and stable ride over 300 miles of choppy seas? Two tests will decide. Captain Kim Cleggett must show the boat can perform. First up, the speed test. He opens the throttle. Suddenly, there's big trouble. One of the jets starts shuddering. Due speed, one of the water jets started shuddering, and we're just investigating the problem now. The only way to get a close look workers inside rotate the jet so that the team can inspect the fan blades. No drag marks anywhere, and, and nothing on the blades. Something seriously wrong, but it's not clear what.
intricate jet is more than 11 feet long and 7 feet wide. Fixing it will be like repairing a car underwater. The diver thinks he's found the problem. The fan blades are jammed. It looks like a piece of the jet broke off and lodged between the blades. There's a composite cone that wraps around the shaft. It's come unbolted and one half has been lost completely. The other half has come through and jammed between two impeller blades. The diver removes the piece and hopes that's all that's wrong. It's been a setback for the crew. But it's all part of testing a boat for the first time. The fix should make the ferry ready for Hawaii. But the crew won't know for sure until the ship sails again tomorrow. Today is the final day of scheduled sea trials. The super ferry has one more chance to prove it can unite the Hawaiian Islands with fast and steady service. If it fails these tests, the ship will return to the warehouse for repairs. But before it attempts the speed test, the Coast Guard wants proof that the jet is working. The pressure is on Captain Cleggett. He'll have to test the jet two ways. First, the jets will have to spin the ferry on its axis. A must-have trick in Hawaii's tight ports. Captain Cleggett gets ready to rotate. The jets turn. And the ferry executes a perfect spin. The jets are holding up. But how will they perform at normal speed? In Hawaii, the ferry will need to maneuver quickly to avoid humpback whales. Okay, standing by. The Coast Guard asks Captain Cleggett to increase his speed and make a 30 degree turn. Three, two, one, and now. Success. The super ferry alters its course with lightning fast reaction time. Good news for Hawaii's marine life. But the ferry's most critical test still lies ahead speed. This is where the jet failed before. Now Captain Cleggett gives it one more go. Okay, we're going up again. The four 20-cylinder engines are humming. Now they'll need to roar. In Hawaii, this ferry will have to race between distant islands in less than four hours to keep the ride enjoyable and efficient. To do it, the ferry needs to reach a cruising speed of 40 knots. That's as fast as a car on a highway. The 44,000 horsepower engines should deliver. Captain Cleggett guns it, and the engines grind up to full power. We're currently doing 39 and a half knots. 39 and a half knots we got up to. Six. So, uh, there we go, we did it. The crew plays it cool. 40 knots is a major feat. But now they have to keep it there for a full four hours without anything going wrong. Meanwhile, with the trial underway, the crew must test the ferry's two T-foils. These stabilizers are designed to counteract the force of each wave to keep the ship steady in choppy seas. But testing them on calm water poses an interesting challenge. Okay, down here we have the motion control panel, our stabilizing system, the forward T-foils. Because the conditions are so perfect at the moment, they're not moving at all. With no white caps in sight, 
Captain Cleggett will try out the T-foils another way by making them rock the boat. We're gonna enforce a roll so that we can test the system. The T-foils fold up and down, causing the ship to lift and dip. There we go now. See the moving and the vessel's moving. And we have a slight port lift, but now it's gone back the other way. The T-foils perform perfectly. The ship's passed its stability test. And now, it's within minutes of completing the speed trial. An expectant crew gets ready to count down. You accept the pen and ink for the rewrite, or? Yeah, absolutely. The ferry has kept top speed for nearly four hours. Get some print out. Bingo, yeah. done. done. The trial is complete. Four hour endurance. Everybody yeah, that's on endurance trial, we have completed that. That's a, that's a good run. No alarms. Congratulations to everybody. That's a done deal. Mission accomplished. The Coast Guard certifies the ship fit for Hawaii's open waters. Soon, travelers in Hawaii will have another way to fly over the seas by Super Ferry.